impaired driving numbers? What have you seen so far? So fortunately this year we have seen a reduction in our impaired driving numbers compared to this time last year. Uh, last year we were hovering around 221 impaired drivers going into our festive ride program. This year we're down to 173 with 67 of those being by impaired by drug. So still a significant number. Um, we're nearly at the national average for 2020. Uh, last year it was roughly 180 impaired drivers per 100,000 people. So we're at that and we still have our festive ride season to go through. So still disappointing numbers. Um, any impaired driving's too many impaired drivers, but it's been a significant reduction for us in Thunder Bay. I'd like to attribute that to people getting our messages, people seeing us out today. Uh, we're joined by Initiative Police Service and Ontario Provincial Police for our kickoff of the festive ride. We're going to be out throughout the month of December, but we're out there throughout the year. You're just going to see an elevated presence through December, especially around the holidays. Um, impaired driving related collisions, impaired arrests, nobody wants that for their families. It's a life changing event to get arrested for impaired driving. Your vehicle's impounded for seven days, your license is suspended for 90 days. We don't want that to happen to anyone. We don't want to see any injuries on our local roadways. Are you concerned at all that like a program like Operation Red Nose is no longer around? It, it, it's concerning in the sense that it's one less option uh, for people to utilize, but as long as people continue to plan ahead, they still have a various options, right? There's still public transit, there's still the, the U-Rides, the, the ride sharing apps, or the designated driver program. That's our fallback. That's all we had through the years plan a designated driver. It's that one day that you're not consuming alcohol. Have pop, have water. There's other alternatives to have that one person as your designated driver. Um, in terms of uh, you know reasons why people give for drinking and driving, like I mean, or, you know, do you have any idea why it is? Is it just they don't think they'll get caught? They don't think the rules apply to them? They just, just make bad judgment? Bad judgment's the, the best option, I would think. A, a lot of people make that decision to go out to the bar knowing they're going to drink and drive. Also, the more you drink, your risk-taking behavior gets elevated, right? So with the consumption of alcohol, you're more willing to take risks. Well, driving impaired is one of those risks. And that's why you need to have that plan ahead to know when you're going to the bar how you're going to get home safely. Are you still seeing these uh, impaired drivers all times a day, seven days a week? Yeah, there, there is no rhyme or reason. Obviously, predominantly your weekend nights, the bar nights, your Friday, Saturday, late evenings are the influx of them. But we'll see impaired drivers of, of all ages from 16 to 80 in the middle of the afternoon on a Tuesday. So it, it speaks to the addiction issues again, which we've addressed before, the, the opioid crisis, the alcohol is an addiction itself, COVID having residual effects on all those things. Uh, but the biggest thing, especially around the holidays, we don't want to see those impaired driving related collisions or people being taken into custody. And, and this holiday, uh, a lot of people getting out with their families more compared to last year. Do you think there's going to be an increase with more families kind of getting together? I would hope not. And that's kind of our, we're going to stress that message is we're happy we can finally get back to the, the quote normalness of non-COVID. Keep that. Be able to go visit your families because if you're in a crash or if you're in jail, you're not going to be seeing your families. So that's our biggest stressor, just don't drink and drive. And we try to pound that message home. For the most part, it looks like people are listening, our numbers are down, that's a huge win, but there's still a significant amount of people for Thunder Bay uh, where those numbers are up.